The goal of this video worksheet is to practice balancing chemical equations. If you don't know anything about chemical equations, check out my video listed in the description. To use the video, pause, balance the equation, then check your work and move on to the next. By the end of the video, you'll no longer be a beginner at balancing chemical equations. Let's get started. When we look at equations, the numbers in front, the coefficients, are the only thing we can change. Right now, even though it's not written, there's a one here, a one here, and a one in front of the HBr. The numbers we can't change are the subscripts, these numbers after. And if there's nothing written, we assume it to be a one. To balance the equation, some people find it helpful to make a table. So now let's count up the atoms on each side. Hydrogen, we have two. Bromine, we have two. Hydrogen on the product side, we have one. And bromine, we also have one. Now remember, we can change the numbers in front, the coefficients. So if I change this here to a two, that would apply to the entire molecule, each of the atoms. So for the hydrogens, one times two, that gives me two. And for the bromines, one times the two, that also gives me two. So now we have the same number of atoms on each side of the equation. We have two hydrogens here, two here, two bromines, and two here. This equation is balanced. You can remove the ones to make it look a little cleaner. And that's the final equation. Let's try another. For this equation, I've already counted the atoms up. So let's see what we can do to change our coefficients. We see that the irons are equal, but we have two oxygens on the reactants and one on the products. So I'm gonna change the coefficient in front of this FeO molecule so that I can have two oxygens. So if I put a two here, I know the one times the two will give me two. I also have to take into account the iron. The one times the two equals the two. So I've fixed the oxygens, but now the irons aren't balanced. I wanna have two irons on both sides of the equations, so if I put a two here, the one times the two equals two, and now everything is balanced. Sometimes when you're balancing equations, changing one molecule will mess up the other ones, but you need to go through that to get the final balanced equation. In this equation, I've added everything up on each side. However, I made a common problem. The reactant side is okay, but on the products, look at the oxygens. I've written the one oxygen that we see in water, but I've forgotten about the two and the carbon dioxide. So really, it's one plus two equals three. And that's a very common error that people make. Once I've done that, everything's balanced. Not too bad, right? So let's try to balance another equation. This equation is similar to others, but we now have parentheses to deal with. Whenever we have parentheses, everything inside the parentheses, everything, is multiplied by the subscript. So let's see how that looks. I've already written down the number of atoms on the reactant side. For calcium, I have one. For hydrogen, I have two times the one here, so two. And don't forget these other two hydrogens here, plus that two, so I have four hydrogens. And oxygens, two times the one, that gives me two oxygens. So now that I've got that, it's not so difficult to balance this equation. Calciums are fine, hydrogens, Looks like I have four here and two here. Let's put a two in front of the H2O. That means the H is two times two. That's four, so we've balanced our hydrogens. And then one times two, that equals two. And we've balanced our oxygens. The key here, when you've got parentheses, everything inside is multiplied by the subscript. In this single displacement reaction, let's start by balancing the Br atoms. I have one Br on the reactants, two on the products. So I'll put a two in front of the NaBr, and now one times two equals two. The Brs are balanced, but I have one times the two for the Na, and they're not balanced. But I have the Brs correct. Let's go over to the product side and fix the Na's. I need two, so I know one times two will give me two Na's, but I also have to change the CLs. One times two gives me two chlorine atoms. But that's good because now the chlorine atoms are balanced, the BRs are fine, and the sodiums are balanced as well. Let's try a more difficult equation. So while this equation looks kind of intimidating, it's not too bad if you know a little bit of a trick. So let's count the atoms on each side. We have PB, 
that equals one. And when I see the NO3 here, and I have an NO3 on the other side, I can write that down as NO3. And this parentheses here shows me that the two applies to everything. So I have two NO3s, I have Na, two of those. And again, SO4 here, SO4 here, that equals, we have one. On the product side, PB equals one, NO3, we have one of those, NA, we have one of those, and then the SO4, we also have one of those. So it looks like we have one NA here and two here, so those aren't balanced, and our NO3s also aren't balanced. Let's fix the NA. If we put a two in front, this one times the two, that give us two, that would balance the NAs, and this two applies to everything here, so for the NO3, I have the one times the two, that would give me two as well, and this equation would be balanced. The trick here is to recognize when you have what are called polyatomic ions, these groups of atoms that are the same on both sides, like the SO4 here as well, and then just count them as one thing. It makes the balancing much, much easier. So that's our last equation. I hope this has helped you. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.